Good morning. Uh, I'm going to be reflecting with you today a little bit on the gospel reading that we just heard according to St. Luke. Uh, we've heard this beautiful parable today, a little story, about a man who originally was rich, but uh, he was blessed even more and acquired even new riches. Uh, basically making this story not exactly about a rich man, it's really about a rich man who just got even richer. And I think we can take out from this story uh, three little life lessons that I'd like to discuss with you today. Uh, the first one being uh, about planning, about the future and about security. So we notice that this man was already uh, rich, as I just said, meaning that he probably conducted all of his life in a way that he invested all of his effort, all of his smarts, all of his time into achieving this wealth. So uh, he was well off, better than other people, definitely better than the people that worked for him. And even though he had a higher standard of living, much more comfort than anybody around him, once he got even further blessed and his land yielded a lot of crops, making him even richer, the first thing that we hear that he did, he started thinking, he started planning. So he started planning some more. And uh, what he started planning about is even uh, a richer lifestyle and even more comfort for himself. Now, we have to think about this and we have to be honest. I know about myself and probably most of you, if we are gonna be honest, we would probably do something similar or at least think something similar. We probably start thinking about you know, I don't know what the future will bring. I want to make sure I have a lot more than I have, than I need today, so that in case I need them in the future, they're there for me. The problem with this is, number one, it's obvious, it's selfishness. We're only thinking about ourselves. And let's be honest again, if we're just saying that we're doing this for our kids or our relatives or whatever, that's selfishness again that's thinking about ourselves and our extended family. Remember that the Lord did not send his uh, disciples with the good news of the Gospels to their uh, immediate relatives or to their uh, family only, he sent them to all the world. So we have to be thinking big. So that was the first mistake that he made. The second mistake that he made is that he basically was thinking very short term. He aimed low. He was thinking about this lifetime only. He should have been thinking for a much longer, you know, future. He should have been thinking about life eternal. Because if we aim low, we will uh, always miss heaven. Heaven is not that low. Uh, now, how, how do we go about acquiring the treasure that is needed for our security, for the future? Well, basically, we need to have the... the treasure in heaven and our Lord himself actually tells us how to get this and I'm gonna read from Luke 18 22 the Lord says sell all that you have and distribute to the poor and you will have a treasure in heaven I mean we do know what to do but we most of the time choose to ignore it either because this doesn't really fall into our own will what we really want for ourselves mostly or because of laziness now this brings us to point number two. So we keep that, uh, saying that this is a story about the rich man. So who is rich? Who among us is rich? Do you think that the Lord, when he was uh, talking about this parable, he was just addressing this parable to those among us who have richness by being, you know, by having a lot of money? Honestly, I think that he wasn't. He was basically talking to everybody that were listening back then everybody who heard the story since then and everybody who heard it here today we are all uh, rich we are all blessed by the lord some of us are blessed by having more money than others some of us are blessed by having more time than others more compassion more capability to connect with others some of us some of us can cook really well can write really well can ex explain things really well we all are rich with something and Honestly, not just something, some things. 
Because having one of those does not mean that we don't have the rest of them or many of the others. So now, if we are all rich, this, is, this means that we all are called to share in our richness. Um, St. Basil the Great says, basically, that if any Christian, any Christian has two shoes or two coats in their closet, this means that they stole the extra one from a poor person who have none. Now, it's a little bit extreme, I know, we all have more than two. But we can actually extract this and apply it on anything in our life. We all have more time during the day. We all have more listening power than we think we can. We all have a lot of things that we just basically waste. I'll give like a small example. I think we all do. I know I do it. We all have enough time during the day to check our Facebook many, many, many times and put comments that are really, most of the time, meaningless, whether we do it or not. We all have time to check the news and listen to the news very intently, thinking that maybe if we listen to all the news around us or in the whole world, what's happening in China, for instance, or wherever, then we have some sort of a power over this news, because now I'm in the know, I know what's happening. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter if we know what's happening. We really need to know what to do with our life. So my third point would be basically about choices. We are faced with choices every single day of our life. So uh, how do we know what to choose? So I, as we just established, we know that we are all rich. So what do we do with this richness? I'm going to read a little bit from the epistle today by St. Paul to the Ephesians, and I quote, and he's addressing, of course, all the believers. You are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Well, this seems to me really intense, amazing, and a little bit scary, because what God is really offering to us, he's offering to us sainthood. So basically, if we know how to invest our temporal treasure today, which we are going to lose anyway, no matter how much time we have, time will end for us. No matter how much money we have, we're not taking any of it with us. No matter how much fame we achieve or whatever else, it really does not matter. Those things we're going to lose. If we decide to give them away now willingly, then what, are, what we are being offered by the Lord is this basically we are offered sainthood just take a look we are offered a place among all of these people here around us among the saints not only that there's even a scarier part we are actually going to be called part of the household of god now i don't know about you this kind of scares me this basically says that we are going to be relatives of god himself i mean the uncreated God, the one who created life, the one who created us, sustains us. We are going to be part of his household. So we're going to be family, basically. This is what's being offered. If we give away the things that we are going to lose anyways. I mean, I don't know. To me, this sounds like a no-brainer, right? It just means that we really need to take a stand right here today. And we really need to start thinking that every time that we give to the poor, if we remember what I just said, this is going to make it so much easier for us to be even more generous. If every time that we support the church of God, we remember what, what this really means, this shouldn't feel like a chore. This should feel like a joy. If every time we are called to volunteer our time, our effort, or anything else that we can, this should bring us to do it with joy, actually, because we're really given pennies and buying with that a huge treasure that is immeasurable. Now, that would be choice number one. Choice number two would be to just ignore all of that. And if we do that, then by default, we would have chosen what the rich man of the parable today have chosen as well and this would lead us to God forbid hear the same 
thing that he heard. We will be called fools by the Lord when he come to claim our souls. And this is only because we chose poorly. Uh, I'm going to end with this with the same little sentence that our Lord ended the parable with today. I'm just going to remind myself and all of you to whoever have ears, let him hear the call today. Amen.